Sean Moby, that said, and we are your favorite podcast about nothing. Get us wherever you get your podcast, whether it's uh, Apple, Spotify, Google. We're there. Get us. We're drinking from the garden hose. Ed, how are you? A little soggy with all this rain. Yeah. But, you know, you know, I've gotten to this age where uh, I just say over and over, good for the grass. Good for the grass. Good for the grass. Yeah, remember, I know. When you, remember when you were young and people would say that shit and you're like, what the hell are they even talking about? Like, who gives a shit? Now, I'm like, yep, I don't have to bring the sprinkler out. Don't got to water the lawn. It's good for the grass. Rain is uh, good. So there, there's, a, there's a thing you and I totally uh, do differently. I don't give a fuck about, fuck at all about my yard. I get it mowed uh, so that it's under control, but half of it's weeds. A lot of I was going to say, so you got crabgrass all over your yard, right? You're one of those crabgrass yards uh so it, it's crazy so if you're facing my house to the right immaculate immaculate and then uh she's got an area of about three yards where her grass ends and it's looks like it's my yard i know it's her yard she knows it's her yard but it looks like mine and then it's crab grass uh no grass weeds um whatever straight from my house through my next door neighbor's house they have a fence and it's still like that and all the way to the corner but the other thing is my yard is kind of wooded and then my next door neighbor is very wooded so it gets progressively more woodsy to house as the houses go down so that that's our excuse we have we have too much shade too much shade can't can't keep a man's lawn i uh when i moved into my house uh my neighbors even said, you'll never grow a good front lawn. And I took that as a challenge. And uh, so, of course, I did. But then I cut down the tree that was shading my yard, which kept the yard out of the direct sun. So it allowed it to grow nice and lush. Yeah. And then when I cut that down, my, my lawn started to get burnt out and I wasn't watering it enough. So now I'm, I'm back. I'm watering it. I'm paying, a, I'm paying for fertilization. Weed kill. I'm out there killing weeds. I'm like, I'm, I'm like full time. I know my neighbors laugh at me on this but yeah so i watched the rain and i'm like but i'm torn though because on one hand i'm like it's good for the lawn but on the other hand i got this dumbass french drain in front of my garage that uh isn't as uh efficient as it needs to be and if if a deluge comes down i may get water in my garage so i'm all nervous about that and tweaked out about that so i'm like a schizophrenic individual when it rains i'm like good for the grass but not good for my garage so anyway that's how I'm doing. I'm just dealing with like flood alerts and all that crap. Okay. Well, you know, it floods, lots of water, which makes me think uh, about uh, the disgusting water in the Sen. And I'm jealous of your buddy uh, who, who went to the Olympics. And I was not planning on watching the Olympics, but as soon as your buddy, I, I believe you know who I'm talking about, correct? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Started posting his pictures of him. In France and at the Olympics, I got jealous enough. Like, I'm, I'm like, I'm going to watch the Olympics. Just uh, I've been inspired, and I've quite enjoyed my Olympic experience for the last uh, two and a half weeks. Been yeah. Been so Obi, I I went to the Olympics in '96 in Atlanta as a as a young man and had a my experience. I went to some events. I did race walking. I did team handball. I did volleyball. I did a basketball game. I did a bunch of baseball games. I even saw the U.S. play in the uh, Olympic semifinal. So that was, that was probably the highlight of the events. But as a young man, the bigger event was just the partying that happened in the Olympic city. But I hear that there's not a lot of partying going on in, in Paris. But so, so I'm a big Olympic guy and I wanted to talk to you about this. Like, this was something I wanted to bring up, Obi, because I'm curious if you were an Olympic athlete, what sport would you be an Olympian in? So I'd like to say it would have been wrestling. Uh, uh -huh. that, that was uh -huh. the sport I was best at uh, growing up. That was my, my sport du jour. Uh, so I'm going to say uh, wrestling. It's also the only one that someone of my stature, it's not the only one, but it's one of the ones that would favor somebody of my stature, a particular body type. So wrestling, yeah. We're going to stick well, with that. You Okay. You could be a shot putter as well. I think I'm a little short for the shot putter. Aren't those guys in the sixes? I, I, you think I pay attention to shot put? <laughs> I mean, have you seen? Like, I see them. They look. They look six four, two ninety, three hundred. I think it's safe to say you wouldn't be a swimmer. 
I uh, no, not a swimmer, not a swimmer. No. Yeah. So I think if I was an Olympian, if and again, if we go back to when we were younger, I think the Olympic sport that really intrigued me was team handball. Okay, I was watching the, some handball today. And the reason I think I would be good at it is because no one else in America plays the sport. So I figure I got a leg up by just saying I would, I would like to play it. I think that puts me ahead of like all of Americans. If that makes sense. Uh, it it kind of it kind of uh makes sense. Except I feel like so many people say that They're like ah, uh, like that was like the main going around all over the internet. Ah, this now I'm I'm trying out for this sport next year. Um, because nobody. But you think it was team ha- team handball? Everyone was trying out. Yeah, for? yeah. I thought lots of people. Tr- I'm, that's the oh, sport I'm going to do. Shit, there goes my theory. Yeah. Because here's the thing: the Olympics are coming to LA in 2028, and the great thing about when your country hosts the Olympics, you automatically qualify a team for every event, right? So, right. R- like if you're paying attention, there is no U.S. team handball team in the Olympics in Paris. We don't qualify. Like there is no team, right? But there will be a team in 2028, which means they got to find like 10 guys to put a team together. Like this is the shot, Ovi. Well, was there no team or did the team not qualify because it got eliminated in the earlier rounds? That's the same as not having a team, Ovi. They suck. My point is, if you if you take up the sport now, you have four full years to possibly get into team handball. Now I'm talking to our younger viewers because right now my knee is swollen um, from playing four softball games in two weeks. Um, so I'm not playing team handball anymore, but that would have been my sport. And I'm telling you, that's an option. Another another sport I don't think a lot of U.S. men are on to, and I think you could go for in 2028, is men's field hockey. That, I think you're right, because there is some, you know, here in the States, there is definitely a uh, that is a uh, woman's sport ideology or thought process going on, which means that the number of people competing to be in that sport is probably lower. But uh, that being said, you know, you better start practicing now. You better find a field hockey team you can be part of. Like finding men's field hockey might be difficult. I, I you could probably Google it, right? And again, I think it's a, out of our age. I think for me, if I like, if the question to me was Ed at your age today, what sport do you think you could be an Olympian in? And I think my answer is dressage. Uh, I think my answer is is air pistol. Yeah, so you think you're the the Turkish guy who can shoot with his hand in his pocket? Uh, I think that that seems to be a sport where age can be overcome. I think shooting the shooting sports, whether it be skeet shooting or air pistol or archery, I think you're right. But I think the dressage, it's the horse that does all the work. Yeah, I don't want to ride a horse. I don't want to ride a horse. I've ridden a horse. Horses horses have an aroma that I don't find too pleasant. Uh, so, so you're going to give up on your Olympic dream over an aroma? Over an aroma, yeah. An aroma that anyone who rides horses has found a way to, to love. But I, 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 no, yeah, I'm gonna give up my Olympic dream over the aroma of horses. Okay, that's a that's yeah. a good uh, that's a good piece. So, Obi, I, I wanted to talk about Olympics today, but there was something else I wanted to talk about today because we had this conversation in my household late last week, and my wife says you got to ask Obi about this. He's the expert in this area. Oh boy! And I said you damn right I got to ask Obi because Obi has opinions on this topic. Oh, no. Oh, no. All right. I'm adjusting my glasses for those who are so, viewing So I want to take our, our listeners back, back a few months when I let out that my wife buys bagels in bulk and freezes them and then heats them up each morning for my daughter to take to school as her lunch. And you yes. flipped your lid that that's I, not how you, you have to have a fresh bagel Blah, blah, blah. You went on and on. And there, we got a lot of comments about it. A lot of people knew you were triggered that day. So here's my question for you, Obi. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. What, is, what is the proper way to eat a bagel? Now, here's your choices, okay? And, and you may give me a third choice. But so the bagel, 
you cut it in half, like you cut it in half, right? To right. toast to toast it, right? Or to no, because right? we don't toast it or heat it up, but go on. Uh, okay, okay. So you cut it in half to put your toppings on it. Okay, right? Okay. So maybe you put your spread on it or with your locks or whatever the F you put on it, right? The question for now is you have two halves of a bagel. Yeah. Do you now put it back on like a sandwich or do you eat each half individually with the toppings up? All right. So I'm not going to freak my lid on this one, but it is a sandwich and it needs to be cut in half. But if you have some other way of doing it, like if you're an open face sandwich kind of person, I'm not going to lose my mind on it, but it, it's not an open face sandwich because it, it's not. It's, it's, it's a sandwich that you close. So you're but, a sandwich. You you think a bagel's a sandwich, even if it's not a bag, bacon, egg, and cheese bagel. Like you're uh, like it's a sandwich with if, locks. If, if you put locks on it, it's a sandwich. If you put cream cheese on it, if it's, it's a sandwich. just cream cheese, I think I might eat it open face. If it's just one smear of something, and you can put the, the stuff on both sides and eat it. But once you put like a lock that might slip, you need a lid on that, or like a tomato, you need a lid. Forget egg and, and bacon. You need a lid. But if it's just cream cheese or peanut butter or butter, because you toasted it and you put butter on it, you can, you can, then open face isn't so bad. Again, it's not as, as triggering as the fact that you've already taken it out of the freezer and toasted it. So, so you're a sandwich guy and cut the sandwich in half. So oh, now yeah. it's, now it's really in quarters if you were to open it back up. Yeah, you could go full quarters. The, the bagel itself has been fully quartered, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's interesting because everyone in my family eats it sandwich style except me. I eat it I eat it open face style. Okay. Well, at least at least your family's doing something right. I'm not surprised. They are the the more um shall we say refined of the folks in your household. They are I, the I very rarely people. You know what's funny is I very rarely eat a bagel. The only time I'll eat it is like if the kids only have half of theirs and it's sitting there and I don't want it to go to waste because kids in Africa are starving. So I, of course, take it and I open it up because it's already sandwich style and then I eat it. That's okay. It. All right. I mean, like, sounds like, though, your house is a lot just cream cheese. I uh, know. My house is butter. Oh, butter. Just, again, just, yeah. if it's just like the butter, like, you know what? Like, I never have a bagel with just butter, but I am thinking back to like when I was in high school and occasionally I would get the bagel with butter from high school. And I think that I actually did eat open face, but I mean, I don't have bagels with butter. It's not so you're a fresh, food. fresh bagel, not toasted sandwich style bagel guy. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Preferably wrapped in foil, having just enough time to settle till you get home, like a five minute drive. Well, not too much longer than that. Just so the whole thing kind of settles. Just like a good hoagie kind of needs to settle into the bread. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So, you, yeah. All right. So, I needed to talk to you about that. And another thing I needed to talk about today is uh, our listeners don't really know this, but we have a service that tracks the stats for our podcast. And how are we doing with our stats, Ed? Well, I think we haven't talked enough about this because I think in, in some ways, you know, in Olympic spirit of if you don't win gold, silver, or bronze, you suck. Without taking a step back and going, even if you come in last at the Olympics, you did pretty damn good to get to the Olympics, right? That's right. That's right. Listen, listen. I was on the side. I was watching the 400, men's 400. We won that one. If anyone saw a great race. The guy who came in last in the men's 400 looked compared to the guys who came in first like he was walking. But he is the guy who got through all of the prelims before the Olympics, got to the Olympics, got through four rounds of whatever in the Olympics, and then got to the finals and lost. That man is so much faster than me in a on a bicycle that it's not even funny. But yeah, he came in last. So in the Olympic spirit. Right. So we make fun of the person who comes in last. And it's, it's a great point that you come in eighth in the Olympics, you suck, right? All of a right. sudden. It's a, it's a, as sports fans, we the guy who's hitting two twenty in the major leagues, he sucks. We want him traded, right? Right. Dudes in the major league. So, but in the in the spirit of that, uh, we were looking at our stats uh, last week, and we realized that we are ranked one thousand and eightieth in the United States for comedy podcasts. And if you put that in perspective, the United States is a pretty damn big country. 
Huge so, country. Huge so, country. So instead of keeping it a secret that we're not top 10, we should brag that we're 1,080. So that's what we're doing today. We're letting our listeners in on a little secret. We are the 1,080th ranked comedy podcast in the United States of America. Hey, hey listen, I'm proud of that. We had a moment uh, where we, I recall very early in our lives, where we, we, we passed the 1,000 mark. We came back down. Yeah, we peaked at 798, actually, according to the stats. Seven, we were at top 800. But then you you all stopped downloading us automatically and hurt our feelings. And now, no, it's it's definitely not our fans' fault. Those of, those of you who are listening, you should be proud of the work you're doing for us. Remember, you can visit us at uh, gardenhose.versell. Comment, join the community. It is a thriving community, as would not as you would expect for the 1,080th ranked podcast in the U.S. Yeah, so I blame the algorithm on X now. I blame Elon Musk yeah. uh, for, for for why we dipped from 798. But the fact is, we have risen. We we did fall lower than 1,080. We are now up to 1,080. We've had a couple fast-moving episodes, which is great. So who knows? Next week, we might be higher. But the bottom line is, we're going to normalize bragging about being ranked 1,080. I think that's a good thing to normalize. I mean, listen, I look, you, I don't know if you mentioned it on air. I think it was definitely told me we are we have outlasted the average podcast by oh, like by like a year and a half. Yeah, and so really we've lasted long, like four or five times longer than the average podcast. So we're we're kicking ass. We're taking we're like, names. Yeah, we're like the woman who's in the Olympic gymnastics competition, who's like 38 years old from like some country you never heard of before. Right, right. No, we are, we are, we are better than the men's handball team in the U.S. We are better than the U.S. men's handball team. Oh, and the field hockey team for damn sure. Damn straight. No. Right. We are not better than the guy who came in eighth in the 400. He's better no. than us, though. No. No, we're not better. We're not better. We might not even be better than Eddie the Eagle. Remember that dude that used to ski jump for Britain? And he, he made the Olympics. And, and he fell every time? Hey, hey, <laughs> we are not better than Eddie the Eagle. Eddie the Eagle <laughs> made the wide world of sports. Like, wasn't he like the, the agony of defeat? That was no, Eddie the Eagle, No, right? he, he, he was not, but he was pretty much like that dude. <laughs> okay. But the fact of the matter was, he was in the Olympics. Right. It's like this woman. Have you seen this woman? Uh, I think her name's Alana Meyer. Her, she was the rugby player for the U.S. I, I, have, I have known about Alana Meyer uh, and her uh, TikToks for two or three years. So I was excited to see her because I love rugby sevens, the sport she plays beside, in addition. So, yeah, I know who she is so very She has well. blown up. If you, if, you haven't, if you haven't caught this young lady, you got to check her out because she's, she had like 600,000 followers before the Olympics, and she's well over 2 million now. She's like one of the hottest stars from the olympics and one of the reasons she's one of the hottest stars is i think she's like 5 11 and 200 pounds right or something like that you wouldn't know it by looking at her but but when you watch her play rugby she runs all the other women over she's very tough yeah. but she's very feminine and somebody was made a comment to her online about well i bet you you got a bmi of 30 meaning you're obese and she clapped back which is what the young kids say she clapped back by saying yeah my bmi is 30 and i am overweight technically however i'm really fit and i'm in the olympics and you're not <laughs> yeah yeah and she won a, a bronze medal the uh, the women's rugby seven another very exciting match uh we were down by five there was no time left on the clock and one of our young ladies breaks a tackle and runs the equivalent of 90 yards for a touchdown uh right in the dead center of the field so she had the easy extra point and we won by two points. Uh, it was an awesome, awesome match. I, like I said, I do love rugby sevens, and it was fantastic. So when you say the equivalent of 90 yards, are you are you saying that because they use the metric system in the Olympics? Or are you, or are you just making that shit up like she really ran 50, but you're like, ah, it's like 90? Uh, I'm saying 90 as in uh, she was in the very first smallest <laughs> section of the field. 
Oh, so you're referring to like American football as if she was on the 10 yard line in a football field and ran 90% of the way. Is that what yes, you're saying? That's what I'm referring to. Yes. So exactly. not knowing the size of rugby, she could have run 170 meters for all we know. We just know she ran 90% is what you're saying. Yes. Yes. And okay. if you, and anyone who watches American football, you know what that 90 yard touchdown looks like, right? The guy breaks through and then there's just two dudes okay. on the corner who are trying, trying to catch him. He's running right down the middle. And that is exactly like, like that, except with right. women, and she scored. I just had to check because I never heard anybody use the st- the uh, term the equivalent of ninety yards before. Understood. That's that's uh, it was a visual equivalent for those. But yeah, that's great. I, again, this is a sport I watch a lot, like a decent amount. But I have really no idea what the rules are because I I don't listen. I just watch because it's really cool to watch, and I understand the scoring. But like what the parts of the field are and what the real rules are. I don't know. People running into each other and smacking each other. And it's really fast. It's cool. I, I think so. I didn't even watch any of that. I've seen the highlights of, of this young lady. And what, one of the things that we're going back to the Olympics here, cause it is, the, you know, we're kind of like a pop, uh, pop, you know, like, listen, uh, listen, we are, we're Gen X culture. Yeah. We're like we love sports. Culture. You know, that's not something we've hidden. And this is the poppiest culture. It's doing great. I think pop culture wise, but, but so, so from a pop culture perspective on the olympics it always amazes me the olympians that blow up like become pop like you cannot predict it before the olympics start no but there's always not. like a few athletes that you never heard of before and then boom they just blow up right and she's one of them like with the inter. and another one that i think we should talk about that is just blown up is snoop dogg i mean has, does white America even know who Snoop Dogg is before these Olympics? I mean, if it wasn't, and Flavor Flav, holy shit, Flavor so, Flav's all over my TV. Uh, I don't know if Snoop Dogg blew up because Snoop Dogg, I think, is blown up. I mean, Snoop Dogg did the whole thing where, you know, Snoop Dogg was on a show with Martha, and the whole joke is one of them's a felon, the other one's Snoop Dogg. Like, you know, like, I think Snoop Dogg is uh, continuing his momentum. Uh, you know he he he's 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 fantastic. He's great. Um, but how many how many seventy year old white men and women really had no idea who Snoop Dogg was before these Olympics? We are probably the oldest folks. Yeah, our parents probably didn't know who Snoop Dogg were. Like we did, but I think we're at the very oldest knowers of Snoop Dogg. So you're right about that. He did get himself a new audience. Of people, a generation. He he probably the boomers like who are this guy? Oh, oh, this guy's great. He's everywhere. Yeah, you you got to know that there's phone calls happening all over this country. Parents calling their kids, older parents, seventy year old parents yeah. calling their Gen X kids or millennial kids, going, "That's Snoop Dogg. I never heard of him, but I like that guy. <laughs> who is he? Who's this Snoop Dogg?" And then and then they show the man with him holding the holding the torch as is, and it's like. Who designed this torch and gave it to Snoop Dogg? Because it just looked like a giant torch. But- so that's the one thing I didn't get, though. Why was Snoop Dogg holding the torch? I get that they're using him to be a commentator, and it's funny. But I didn't get two things. I didn't get how he got to hold the torch. And on the first night of the Olympics, when Caleb Dressel won that gold medal, I didn't know how he got to sit next to Caleb Dressel's wife and kid. Like That's so random that Snoop Dogg's next to her. Uh, so I think the seating, the broadcast probably had some control over. They figure we're going to have to show her tonight because Kayla Dressel's the favorite American swimmer. Yeah, maybe. It's just interesting. Like, yeah, it's yeah. so random that Snoop Dogg's sitting next to his wife. But uh, I, you know what? I don't understand why Snoop Dogg got to carry the torch so close to the end. end. Now, I know a guy who is just a guy. I think he works for the New Jersey government in some capacity who carried the torch in Atlanta, like as it was running, like he had, uh, you know, he, however long he got to carry it, but every four years he shows his pictures of him carrying the torch and being part of that, that, that run. So I don't know how Snoop Dogg, how people get involved in that, but obviously he got involved. Well, on some level, Obi, I think there's a charity aspect. I mean, there's freaking people don't know the torch leaves Greece, Athens at some point earlier in the year. And there's like a relay that people run from Athens 
to where it gets lit. And I think there's like a charity aspect early on where you can pay money <laughs> to run a mile with the torch. Like if you're nobody, but it's like in May when the Olympics are in July. Right. But Snoop Dogg held the torch like literally 15 minutes before like the final lighting. Like that's not a pay to play thing. That's a, get I don't, paid. that's a, yeah, right. He, he, yeah. I don't, I don't get that. That, that is, uh, we could probably Google that. Uh, and I, maybe I'll remember to Google it when we're done. But that, right. I agree with that. I was confused why Snoop not an Dogg athlete. Not an athlete. got the torch at that moment. He's not French. Like that's the time well, when that's he would, the other thing. He's not he's not an athlete, but he's not French either. Right at that point, like you'd be like, oh, okay, some Fre like some French famous person I never heard of would be carrying the torch, or maybe and even there was a, a lot of them. There was yeah. a lot of them. Yeah, or a French famous person I have heard of would be instead. It was American Snoop Dogg carrying the. It was it was weird. I agree. Uh, I'm not. I'm not complaining about it because i don't know how they figure out who carries the torch at all but it was definitely not the person you think would have the torch in the last day of the torch relay yeah so i think snoop dogg's blown up i think this young lady from rugby's blown up but i'm not sure we've gotten that other person yet well there was i mean there's been a few people who've had a moment i wouldn't say the blow up there was the yes. nerdy the nerdy uh, po uh yes. palm horse guy yeah, uh, there was there is the glasses only uh, shooting guy. Um, yes, he might be he might be one of the bigger blobs. There's been some great memes about him as a hitman. That's good, yeah. but you're right. But I don't think he's got a million followers on social media. No, uh, I think this was. You're right that it's hard to predict, but I also think that a lot of the people who have won. The one thing I've noticed about the Olympics is, it's a lot of people I already know in a lot of sports where you get the people who blow up, right? Like, isn't Simone Biles third gymnast? Like, yeah, Mary Lou went once, as far as I remember. Yeah. But this is Simone's third. Uh, Noah, the sprinter Noah Lyles, I already knew him a little bit. Of course, I am a sports fan, but still, he was kind of, I felt, in the public eye. Um, yeah. yeah, not really an up, no, no upset. You need it, because you need an upset. Now, I think... The men's fit, and now we're getting real nerdy here. But the men's fifteen hundred race yesterday, American, that was a real upset. Yeah, maybe. I mean, his dad might actually take off because there was that great scene of showing the guy's mom and dad celebrating as he was winning, and his dad's like, "What the f?" Because <laughs> it was amazing the way his kid won that race. Yes, yes. There's also the four hundred today Hall. His victory, um, if you watch the high, if, if you didn't watch it today, go ahead tonight Ed, and watch the uh, highlights. I know I've spoiled it for you, but he is in like when they come around with a hundred uh, meters to go, he's he does not look like he's going to win this race. And the face and the energy he put into winning was amazing. And then the uh, steeplechase, the American, also was quite impressive. All right, can we talk about steeplechase for a second? Yes, that is the most random sport that they it, give a gold medal for. Like. So they just, they're like, hey, you're going to run really far, and we're going to just put these random hurdles out there. And Oh, by the way, one of them is going to have a big puddle of water after it. You can, so on that one, you could, you could jump onto that one and then try to spring over the water. Yeah, but or, nobody does. Everyone gets their feet wet. Uh, there's a lot like of guys. A, doing it's, like a, it's like a tough mudder with no mud. Right, right. It's a tough mudder with no mud. It's the original tough mudder. It I, is a... How do they come up with that sport? Like, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's put a puddle for them to jump into or over. Like, what the f? I, I don't know how that came about. Uh, I'm not. I'm not interested in googling where the where that sport came from. And it's like a weird distance too, like random distance. And how do they put that hole of water in the track all over? Like, dig it out, put the hole. They have to fix that. I guess that's why it's like the last event because they have to destroy the track for it. Uh, yeah, and and and. And the better question is, like, how do you become a steeplechase? Like, how does it, like, yep, my event is steeplechase. Is that because you suck at all the other things, but you're, like, don't suck enough? So they're like, you should do steeplechase. Well, it's it seems to be maybe the the the, the guy who suck at distance running. Because the reason I say that is because the countries that dominate it are the Kenyans. And they've, like, won gold every year until last 
year. And right. Um, I, I think you got to like not qualify for your like distance running regular. And then they're like, oh, you're steeplechase, dude. <laughs> good, good luck. Run a distance and jump. So you Make sure do, you, you jump because because those those that those turtles are not as high as the regular hurdles. They're about knee level. Like if you don't jump, you're gonna break the oh, kneecap. Oh, Ed, yeah, the 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 guy who was uh, the favorite to win did not clear one of the hurdles. Oh, had to hurt because they're not that high. Uh, carried off in a stretcher. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Now I would think the thing about steeplechase for those of you who haven't seen it, you gotta look it up. I think the real challenge, it's not a high hurdle, but I think what it is, is you are running almost over, it's like a two mile race. Yeah. So you're running, you're tired. You're very you're tired. tired to try to like get your steps right and jump over that. That's a hassle. And I think that's why people hit it. Now, now the regular hurdles now, Obi, I don't know if you know this, but for the men, like that 110 meter hurdle, high hurdle race. Those hurdles are like over three feet off the guy. I think they're three feet six or something like that. Yes. They're, they're, I could not jump over that. Like just that was my only job was to like if my high jump was the goddamn hurdle, I don't think I could clear it. And those guys are running like 11 min, 11 seconds down the for 110 meters over those hurdles. I don't know. I remember being a kid. And I don't know if I was in high school middle school or elementary school i don't know i i pretty sure i had to be middle school or high school because i'm now the the teacher is coming to mind he was both my high school and middle school gym teacher and they were trying to teach us hurdles i did not clear a hurdle once not once <laughs> did i clear a hurdle at my most athletic so there's no way i could clear a hurdle now yeah so i think that's why we didn't choose hurdling but um yeah so steeplechase check it out um yeah yeah i mean by the time by the time you get this podcast we're gonna be the only thing that's gonna be left is watching lebron and the women's basketball team just smash the world pretty much uh but yeah yeah. and and listen the bottom line is the the closing ceremonies suck right so you're not gonna see that no no the opening ceremonies we won't even talk about because we don't get into things that anybody finds controversial other than bagels but uh yeah the, the opening ceremonies can be fun I think they kind of suck too. It's only cool to see the the athletes at the beginning because half the athletes leave at the end anyway. They're like, I'm out of here. Yeah, I don't want to see this. I want to go to the Olympic Village and find somebody else who's in shape. And oh, that's the last thing. I love the stories of the athletes that get kicked out of the Olympic Village because they're not behaving well. It intrigues me. Like you got a free ticket, you're going to the Olympics, and you go and screw up because you got to go drink or you got to go sneak out. It's hilarious that people get kicked out of the Olympic Village. Hey, I'm not surprised because especially if you've finished your event, like I know, but it. keep it, keep it together for a week. They say there's a lot of hanky panky that goes on the Olympic village. So why are you trying to get kicked out? They say there's a ton of hanky panky that goes on in the Olympic village. Like, yeah, like, you know, everybody's in shape and everybody's happy. So, yeah. And nobody speaks the same language. So they don't even know what they're saying. Can't there's only one language. Different. There's only yeah. one language in the Olympic Village. It's the language of love, Ed. It's the language of love. Apparently and, so. and everybody speaks it. It's great. That's the other crazy thing about the Olympics. The coaches are yelling at the, the Polish coach is talking, is talking to his volleyball team in English. In English. Well, everyone speaks English. Right. Everyone speaks English because uh, English sucks. And the charm is that we suck. I'm Obi. That's it. Catch us in a couple of weeks on Drinking from the Garden Hose.